What up, what up, what up, and welcome. This is Matthew Msingati, the designer and developer. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Coded Design, where I teach coding and user interface design. In my last video, it was a video about React and Next.js. I was just sharing with you guys how I have learned React in 12 days. So I've decided I must create a follow-up video where I explain the confusing JavaScript. All the modern JavaScript frameworks, your uh, React, Next.js, your Vue.js, your Angular, I'm just assuming that they are capitalizing on JavaScript, on vanilla JavaScript. So it's very important for us to dive deep into JavaScript to see what it is and um, how it works and how it's being used by these frameworks to achieve whatever they want to achieve. I'm hoping um, I'm laying a foundation uh, for you to some sort of understand React because as for me React was not easy. I took time to understand it so I've just realized in order for me to understand how React work and how it is or not even React, all other uh, modern JavaScript frameworks, I need to understand JavaScript. This video it's about that. It's more like uh, a foundation phase for a for React. So let's just jump straight into it. So I've prepared my presentation on Figma. So this is Figma. Now let's jump straight into it. Okay, let's talk about JavaScript. Um, JavaScript it's a front end scripting language. So when I'm saying it's a front end scripting language, I mean it's browser based. Meaning that even if you are not online, as long as you've got Chrome, uh, Internet Explorer, or Mozilla Firefox, JavaScript can run. So meaning that it runs locally on your machine and particularly on your browser. So it's a front end and it runs on your browser. Um, Java is meant for DOM manipulation. Um, DOM manipulation is um, something like, for instance, this is a web page okay so this web page as we are hovering uh, over these um these uh, uh tags or whatever as you can see that there's a border around it and also there's this uh lock icon and an eye icon okay so this can be achieved with uh, css this can be done um, using css however JavaScript is capable of achieving whatever that CSS can achieve, meaning that JavaScript can work on the DOM element, which is the HTML element, and apply whatever effect. And in most cases, when we're talking about DOM manipulation, you can select any element in the DOM, for instance, like this one, and then hide it or show it as you will using JavaScript. So when I'm saying JavaScript is for DOM manipulation, I mean it's for manipulating HTML elements, as you can see here, okay? And also the app that I'm using or the platform that I'm using, Figma, the one that I'm using currently, I think it takes advantage of JavaScript and it manipulates a lot of DOM element because it's a full-blown graphic design application competing um, with your Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, which those are um, PC-based application. But it does a phenomenal job of creating high-quality front-end mock-up and even posters. But how it does that by only running on the browser, it makes use of JavaScript, okay? So, also JavaScript is used for being a back-end linker, meaning that Let's say uh, when you are creating uh, a form that will communicate with the back end or send information to the back end, you can do that with HTML, a normal HTML form. But at the same time, you can also achieve the same thing with JavaScript, more especially if you are going to send information to the back end or to the database without refreshing your page. Meaning that, for instance, things um, that do that are, 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 are situations where you have to upload an image or you have to upload a song or you have to upload a document. 
then that's where you will use Ajax in, uh, in JavaScript. You send the information without a page refresh. So basically, that's um, some sort of a brief about JavaScript. This is information that you know already. It's not something new. I didn't dive deep into JavaScript. But what I wanted to, to drill into your mind is that JavaScript is mainly for front end and it runs on the browser. Mainly that's what it is for. Okay. Now let's jump to front end versus back end. What type of code must be done in the front end and what type of code must be done in the back end? This is not a web design problem. Even in, in IDEs, which is in um, uh, integrated development environment like um, Microsoft um, Visual Studio or maybe when you're programming with Visual Basic, whereby you are having a software that has been installed in your computer and this software, uh, a programming software or programming language, it consists of a lot of things that will help you to finish your program quickly or to produce your 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 app quickly for instance with the visual studio uh, um, uh, 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 basic uh, um, yeah with visual basic or uh, microsoft visual studio you'll find out that it's a package that has been installed when you want to add some buttons there are some buttons already there when you want to add the back end features of the back end are in the same pack when you want to connect to the database, features to connect to the database, they are in the same pack. So even in that sort of environment, you don't just easily think that this will go to the front end and this will go to the back end. You still have to make some decisions as to what are the tasks that are going to be performed by the front end and what are the tasks that are going to be performed by the back end, even in those environments, not only here on the web. So I call that the code balance, what goes to the back and what goes to the front. So in terms of uh, that uh, code balance, then you will find out that there are some things that you must do in the front end. There are some things that you must do in the back end. For instance, let's say we are validating an input. We want to see, maybe let's say you want to validate if, is this the correct email? Or let's just take a simpler one. Is this input not empty? Because you can't just send an, an empty input to the database. So one have to ask himself, am I going to use JavaScript to validate that, which is the front end? Or am I going to use, let's say, PHP, which is the back end? So both of these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, languages or programming languages or scripting languages can do the job very well but as a developer you need to make a choice depending on your coding style and the requirement and what you are doing it's either you can validate on the front end using javascript or you can validate using a php on the back end so here i was just telling you that as a developer there is always a case where you have to choose. Now that we know there is front and there is back, maybe people might assume that, okay, back end is more strong and also it runs quicker. So let's take everything and push it to the back end. That's a problem also. Some people might say that if JavaScript can do almost anything that uh, the, the, the the back end can do why don't we do everything on the front end also still that's a problem so in your programming journey you will have to decide like how the the the, the, the code load or the code balance what tasks coding tasks are you going to push to the front end and what coding tasks are you going to push to the back end it's not an easy thing you don't just get on the go and feel like let's push everything to the back or let's push everything to the front. So I've already given you an idea, background of what JavaScript does, a very brief one. And also now I'm telling you that you must be aware of code balance. There is a back and there is a front end. And these guys must uh, share the workload or the code load according to, um, let's say, 
maximum productivity depending on the problem that you are solving okay now let's jump to javascript specifically modern javascript now as you have seen that javascript is basically for the front end and there is also another part which is called the back end where i can mention php now the modern javascript now we are getting into react vue.js and all other modern uh, javascript frameworks now javascript is more like expanding its own um uh, capacity or its own reach or its own uh, what can i say uh, um, environment its own environment now as time goes by companies are using javascript for front and back end so do you see now javascript it's starting to 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 some sort of overlaps before it was easy for us to know that uh, javascript is for the back end or javascript is for the front end but now modern javascript is starting to some sort of overlap to take the front end aspect of things and also it takes the back end aspect of it this movement or this shift or this innovation has given birth to modern javascript frameworks your reacts and your vue.js and your node.js i hope that one it's very clear this is what i wanted to explain why now all of a sudden we are having like modern javascript framework react and whatever it's because of the rise of a uh, 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 modern javascript or the capability of javascript to run in the back end as i've told you that here javascript runs on the browser that means here even if you you can be offline you cannot be connected javascript can still run because it runs locally on your browser but now here they there are possibilities now these days that javascript can run on the back end which is can run on a server and that give rise to some sort of a new possibility and programmers or uh, big companies are capitalizing on that hence now we've got these frameworks javascript it's starting to to overlap it's starting to expand its environment meaning that you can use javascript for front end and back end of which before you were only using javascript for front end okay without being with that uh, uh, being said or explained now let's just jump to a little bit of intro into these uh, modern javascript uh, uh, frameworks okay so as i've told you that javascript um just it's a it's a scripting language it's more like a programming language um and also it manipulates uh, the dom which is the html elements okay meaning that when you want to do a little bit of coding complex coding you use uh javascript and then um, when there is some sort of normal uh, PO styling, you use CSS. And then obviously we cannot do that without HTML. Now there is React. Then React comes in. React now is telling us that we can mix HTML and JavaScript. It's like we can mix that together. Instead of having to jump to javascript whenever you want to manipulate your html your dom elements or whenever you want to do complicated uh, css styling now react is telling us that look i can create a platform or a way where you can be able to some sort of get javascript and html integrated and it does that through a let me call it a language for now or a syntax or a way of doing of writing code which is called jsx 
which is this JSX now, it's capitalizing on JavaScript uh, and JavaScript as a scripting language, or let's just give it the name as a programming language, and um, HTML as a mock-up language. Now it's like React is coming in to blend HTML and JavaScript so that when you, you cannot really know which one are you writing. Am I writing HTML or I'm writing uh, JavaScript? So in a way, React makes it easier for you not to worry much about how the HTML element is going to be rendered. You don't really, really, really type a lot of HTML with React because React does that for you behind the scene. So meaning that, let's say, if you use to write div uh, and opening div and closing div and all other divs, now here you just write one tag and that tag is a React component and that tag it's mixed with it with JavaScript. So meaning that that tag can be reactive. What do I mean reactive? As soon as anything in that tag changes, automatically in the DOM it will be reflected. I know maybe this part might not be as clear as at the moment, but I will do a follow-up video explaining everything. So what I wanted you to get in this video is that number one, understand JavaScript and how it was and where it's going now so that you can understand how Next.js is capitalizing on that using React at the same time. Because now Next.js is coming to say that if React is trying to mix HTML and JavaScript, trying to create an easy platform for somebody who is not knowledgeable about HTML to be able to uh, 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 render HTML and uh, like quicker and easier and faster without writing a lot of HTML and also it's easier for to manipulate that HTML but it does that on the front side on the front end meaning that on the browser only now next JS is coming to push React's capability to the next level to say that if you only do that on the front end, let me come and tell you that there are some pages that we can render on the back end. Using the same technique that you have came up with as React, but now I'm going to help you to render the same pages not only on the front end, but to the back end. So that's about it uh, for now. Uh, just uh, in, in closing, let me tell you that um, this modern JavaScript thing, it's not as easy because it has got a lot of layers and a lot of changes and a lot of pieces. For instance, if we're talking about React, React is not an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, whereby everything is here. React will tell you that I am solving this problem mixing HTML and JavaScript, then you have to install another thing to do something else. If you want to add icons, a quick, the quick way of adding icons into React, you must use a certain whatever plugin or whatever that you have to download. So I'm trying to say it's not easy, but in this series of videos, I am going to break it down and explain it conceptually so that you can at least have an entry point as to getting into React and Next.js. Otherwise, I'm Matthew Singati, the designer and developer. If you feel like this video has added value into overall understanding of the web architecture, React, uh, JavaScript, and modern JavaScript, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, this is Coded Design. See you on the next one.